As much as I like making my own discoveries and exploring our ancient past, I also like to stay on top of the archaeological discoveries and breakthroughs consistently happening all throughout Peru. So today, we're going to go through a rapid-fire description of 10 of the most significant archaeological discoveries over the past year. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And with that, let's see what archaeologists have been finding and researching down in Peru. An analysis of ancient remains found in the burial sites of Willemaya Pataxia and Soto Micaia Pataxia in the Puno region indicated that the diet of cultures in this region was predominantly plant-based, being almost 80% vegetables and other plant matter and 20% carnivorous. This discovery highlights a more sophisticated understanding of agricultural cultivation than was previously thought and kind of shifts the hunter-gatherer idea to more of a gatherer-hunter notion. In the Chao Valley in the La Libertad region of Peru, archaeologists discovered what is believed to be the oldest adobe construction in the Americas, dating back 5,500 years, making it older than the stone pyramids of Corral and the stone pyramids in Egypt. This discovery was actually made back in 2023 at the site of Los Morteros. But in 2024, archaeologists conducted ground-penetrating radar studies, and that preliminary evidence indicates anthropogenic structures, including walls, rooms, and floors. Now, this here is an image of the mountain or mound where the structure is buried, which is just incredible because looking at it, you can't tell it apart from the rest of the landscape, which just reaffirms to me how much is still out there just waiting to be discovered. An enclosed architectural structure dating back to the formative period was unearthed in Apurima, and it was characterized by distinctive white plastered walls. But what makes these particular findings interesting is that typically architecture with white plastered walls that has paint applied to it afterwards, those were typically found on the coast. And so what this discovery suggests is that there was potentially a lot more interaction between those cultures living on the coast of Peru and those up in the highlands. Archaeological investigations in Cajamarca led to the discovery of a megalithic plaza estimated to be 5,000 years old, making it the oldest known example of such monumental construction in this northern highland region of Peru. Now, the plaza is believed to have served potentially astronomical observations or large-scale ceremonial events. But the lead archaeologist of that team said in an interview that the particular megalithic construction of this plaza is distinctively different from any of the other plazas in the surrounding Andes Highlands regions, which makes it a pretty paramount discovery. Excavations at the Cobian archaeological site revealed irrefutable evidence of sequential occupation by both the Ichma culture and subsequently the Inca Empire. Now, this is typically not a rare occurrence in Peru, as you'll often find that later cultures were indeed building upon the structures or foundations of architecture that were left by the cultures before them. But this discovery is further helping archaeologists understand the process of imperial integration as the Incas conquered and absorbed the cultures surrounding them that eventually would make up their empire. In the Viru Valley, a previously unknown geoglyph has been discovered and it's been attributed to the Moche or Mochica culture. Now, they were known to create these large-scale earthworks. And here's an image of the geoglyph. Now, I personally can't really see it. I think it looks more of like one of those ancient corrals where animals were kept or some sort of housing or storage center of some kind. But they're saying that this is an earthwork or a geoglyph. So we'll just leave it at that. One of the biggest discoveries coming out of 2024 was archaeologists uncovered a temple structure dating back an estimated 4,000 years, which significantly pushes back the timeline for complex religious architecture on the northern coast here in Peru. In fact, it's forced the reassessment of the general evolution and spread of religious symbolism and practices in Peru as a whole. And this is because this temple and its iconography date back a full thousand years before the Shavin culture, which until this point, it was the Shavin culture that was 
theorized to be the epicenter of religious ideology and cultural practices. So this finding now suggests a potential different origin point for the early religious practices of these ancient cultures. Now, what's even more interesting about this site to me personally is its location. Because in my 2024 expedition to Peru, I explored this ancient site called Puru Lin, which is a massive site consisting of over a dozen temple pyramid structures. And it hasn't really been looked at since the 1970s. But the site where this new temple was discovered last year is in that same river valley as that site of Puru Lin. So I firmly believe that if and when archaeologists eventually make it back to the site of Puru Lin to reinvestigate and hopefully excavate the site further, there's going to be further discoveries made. And it's my assertion that there will be evidence of even earlier habitation periods and religious development. The tomb of a high-ranking religious figure was unearthed in Monte Grande in the Jaén Cajamarca region. And with it was found evidence and residue of cacao cultivation dating back 5,500 years. Now, prior to this discovery, it was believed that the domestication of cacao originated in Mesoamerica. However, this find at Monte Grande shows that cacao was being cultivated here 1,500 years prior to when it was being done in Mesoamerica. Another one of the most notable discoveries of 2024 was the discovery of a throne room at the site of Panamarca in the Ancash region in Peru. A throne and murals were discovered in what's being called the Moche Imaginary Room, and it depicts complex scenes of a prominent female figure, likely indicating a high priestess or queen or a combination of the two. She is depicted as receiving offerings, participating in processions, and is often associated with the symbols of the moon and the sea. Physical evidence was found on the throne itself. Besides wear and tear patterns, there were also beads and threads, which suggest that it was actually used by a living person of high status, and it wasn't simply decorative. This reminds me of the discovery of the Lady of Cal at the El Brujo complex, as this appears to be another solid example of female leadership in these ancient cultures. Over 303 previously unknown geoglyphs were discovered in the Pampa de Nazca region using drone imagery and artificial intelligent analysis. Now, these figures, primarily consisting of anthropomorphic and animal motifs, while generally smaller in size than the well known Nazca lines, they're actually found to be older. And dating to an earlier period indicates that this method of carving these big geoglyphs into the landscape was perhaps a tradition passed on generationally. And now a bit of a bonus archeological find, because of course this list would not be complete without the 2025 discovery, discovery of tunnels under Cuzco. Now I put these in air quotes because technically these tunnels have been known about for a very long time. And it's just now in 2025 that mainstream archeology span has picked up the story and decided to verify it publicly. The discovery of this ancient Incan tunnel system underneath Cusco combined ground penetrating radar with the 16th century accounts of the Spanish chronicles indicating the existence of them. However, it's generally well known at this point that the local Quechua population, the Catholic Church, and even a handful of archaeologists really did know about these ancient tunnels for several decades. I actually cover some of this in the video I did with Arnold when I interviewed him. He is a native Quechua guide and local anthropologist up there in Cusco, and he sheds some pretty interesting light on the topic of the tunnels. So feel free to check that out if you like. But so far, what's been uncovered or discovered is a set of tunnels actually branching off in three sections, starting at Sacsayhuaman. But the main tunnel is going from Sacsayhuaman to the Cordy Gancha, in the center of Cusco. And interestingly enough, Cusco, its layout being in the shape of a puma, this main tunnel goes from the head of the puma to the heart in the Coricancha. And just to throw another interesting archeological discovery out there, zoo archeologists found that in the Lambayeque region, the ancient Sican culture really cared for their domesticated animals because dogs and wolves and llamas were found with fractured bones that had been healed. 
So it indicates that there was what appears to be a genuine care for these animals besides simply the fulfillment of utilitarian purposes. So as you can see, discoveries are clearly being made consistently. And there's still a lot more out there that continues to be unearthed and needs to be researched that will help further our understanding of our ancient past. I mean, frequently, even sites that were originally surveyed or looked at in the 70s and 80s and really all throughout the 1900s, well, as they're being reassessed, new discoveries are happening because the approach typically back then when archaeologists first came across these sites is that they were looking for treasures. And so in-depth excavations and research and cultural connections weren't really made at the time. So as archaeologists go back investigating these things, who knows what we might find? And it's my goal that Pillars of the Past makes it to the forefront of some of the new research and new discoveries that are happening. And with that, I've started a Kickstarter campaign in order to help support a 2025 expedition back into Peru to capture and document some of these obscure ancient sites. By far, since this channel's inception, the hardest thing I've had to do, and you've seen it, I've scaled mountains and gotten lost in the desert and all sorts of things, but the hardest and most difficult thing to do is ask for help and support. There's a ton of rewards levels with really cool things like personal phone calls and access to all the 3D models from the 2024 expedition and a whole bunch of other things. And it'll all go towards better equipment and the ability to make it to even more difficult sites. Oh, also, Pillars of the Past is trying to put on its inaugural tour, and that's going to be down in the Paracas Nazca regions at the end of 2025. So if you're interested, there's going to be a link in the description below for that as well. But beyond all that, I appreciate you being part of the community and supporting the channel. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.